a lot of people email me asking, they say, hey Curtis, I don't have any money, how can I start a farm? Well, I got some good news and some bad news for you. Bad news is you cannot start a farm without some money. The good news is you can start a farm with a small amount of money and that's what I'm gonna to explain to you in this video. Okay, so the key to starting a small farm with very little money is starting with the things that you, you that you need, like just starting with the basics. So I'm gonna work within a $5,000 budget range and explain to you how you can start a farm on $5,000 and then you can make some money and then recapitalize that money to grow your farm from there. Because you need money to start a business and you need more money to expand that business. But why not make money on your farm to grow your business. The one thing I like about doing that is that you are sort of organically testing the marketplace to see what's working and what isn't. And there's one thing that's great about starting on a small budget is it forces you to make very calculated and careful decisions on how you spend your money. I've worked with a lot of nonprofits over the years and one thing I've seen is that they often can kill an operation with too much money because if they have too much money to spend, they just try to find places to spend it. Whereas when you have very little money to spend, you're asking yourself, do I really need that thing? Maybe I don't. Maybe we can start with this thing for now and then work up to that. And that, that whole process is a, is, a, is a great experience for personal growth but also starting a business or, or having a business grow because you get to test things out and then see if they're working. If they don't, you're not going to continue them and if they do, you're going to double down on them. And that's that's been my strategy my entire career from farming. I started my farm on $7,000 but I did spend a lot of money at the beginning that I didn't need to. And I'm going to show you the infrastructure that you can that you that you should absolutely start with in order to get some production going. First, I just want to talk about the land a little bit. In order to start making money on a farm, all you need is a small amount of land. You can literally start with a yard like this. So this is a 2,000 square foot plot. When I say 2,000 square feet, I'm including just the block of land. So I'm including the walkways, which I have 10 inch walkways. I'm including a few feet on the perimeters around the edge. So that block of land. If you're going to farm high value crops like I write about in my book and what I do on my farm, a block of land like this can make $20,000 in a standard North American climate. So I'm in Canada. I'm in I'm in British Columbia, Southern British Columbia, and I can farm a plot like this for at very least six months of the year without any season extension, without anything complicated, just a basic growing season. I can make $20,000 on that land. But the thing that's important is I'm only going to grow certain crops. I'm not going to grow potatoes. I'm not going to grow cabbage and onions. I'm going to mostly grow salad greens, fine herbs, and baby root vegetables. So if you don't know what makes my profitable crop list, click up here and check that video out. I've talked about this many times before. There's sort of a criteria that I follow. So that is really important there. Now when you're starting out, you really just want to focus on some simple market streams. Maybe one Saturday farmer's market or you want to sell to a few different restaurants. So in this video, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the production plan. I'll save that for a longer form video content where I'll kind of lay out what I think you should plant in order to get started. But you know, just start with something simple. Start with something that's that's immediate cash flow. You know, that's what's great about quick growing crops is that from 30 days from seed to harvest, you've got something to sell. So that's really important. So now let's take a look at the infrastructure and talk about the basic things that you need to get started. Taking into consideration that you've got at least 2,000 square feet, right? And so this could be your grandmother's backyard. It could be your neighbor's backyard. It could be your backyard. It's not that hard to find a plot of land like this to farm on just to start. You can expand as you go. When I started my farm, I started with just one place and then I was farming the neighbor's place and then I was getting more places from there. And I'll save how to find land for another video, but if you've got a small piece of land, whether it's urban or rural, doesn't matter. All you need is something small because if you're gonna go big, you're gonna need more infrastructure. And so I would really, you know, if we're talking about starting with very little money, $5,000, 
we're not going to be putting any heavy machinery into our budget here. So that means we're going to do everything by hand and that's totally doable on a small scale. So let's check out some of the tools I'm talking about. So if you're going to farm commercially, you need to have some kind of post harvest area. This is probably the most important place on your farm. It's where you'll store vegetables, it's where you'll wash things, you'll dry things, and you'll pack things like packing greens, uh, packing tomatoes in containers, whatever it is. The post-harvest area is very important. So I'm gonna go through each piece of infrastructure here and explain it. You can start really simply. You don't have to have this kind of setup. You can set up a temporary canopy in your backyard. And that's how I've done it. You can start really simple. Okay, if you're going to start farming commercially, you must have a walk-in cooler. You can buy or build a walk-in cooler for relatively cheap. I've done videos on this before. You can get something like this for $1,000 or sometimes way less. So that is really important. The, the thing that's key about a walk-in cooler is it allows you to store produce for a longer period of time so you can market it, but it also allows you to get things off the field quickly to, to get the field heat off so that that product doesn't degrade so quickly and it allows you to streamline tasks so you can just get harvesting done when it needs to be done opposed to doing it all at once. You need a walk-in cooler if you're going to farm commercially. This is a washing table. This is where we wash root vegetables, wash totes, do pretty much most of the wet work on the farm. You can build something like this for a hundred dollars maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less depending on the materials you have available but all this is built with two by fours i have two by sixes for the legs and this is a half inch galvanized steel mesh and uh, basic washers to hold uh, hold it down with screws in there the materials are not that expensive and it has a rubber liner on the bottom that directs the water into another bin and then i pump that water onto my perennial berries and bushes around my property. But this is an important piece of infrastructure and um, it's, really, it's really necessary in the post-harvest area. This is a bubbler. This is our primary greens washing station and it works with a jacuzzi pump underneath that pumps air through these holes and it creates a jacuzzi effect which shakes off all the dirt and bugs on your greens. You can build this thing for around $400 to buy a big tote like this. These are just kind of water or feed, feed troughs. You can get at ag supply stores and this is all made with PVC. That is our jacuzzi pump. These are our salad spinners. I've done videos on these before. You can build one of these for around $300, sometimes even less because the components are quite simple. Just go get yourself a Maytag washing machine and modify it. I've done videos on this before and um, I've been spinning salad greens many different ways over the years but this is by far the best, most efficient and fast. This is our greens drying screen. This is important if you're going to do a lot of salad greens. Some people don't use a greens drying screen and that's fine. I find that if we blow dry our greens a little bit and get any residual water off them, they increase the shelf life two or three fold. So it's, it's been a worthwhile piece of infrastructure for us. There's not much more than a couple hundred dollars of materials here, possibly even less. These box fans up there cost about $20 each. So this is a relatively inexpensive piece of infrastructure to build. Now the Quick Cut Greens Harvester, uh, this tool is in many of my videos, but even if I was on a very, very micro sized farm, I wouldn't grow greens without this tool. It saves us, it turns eight hours into 45 minutes of work per week. So if you're gonna farm on the very small scale, this tool is certainly worth your while because on a small farm, if you're trying to make money at it, you wanna be growing greens. Those are one of the more profitable crops, the pr more profitable categories of crops, I should say. So I definitely wouldn't do it without a quick cut greens harvester. You know, this tool runs around $500, five to $700, and um, it's worth every penny. As far as soil work and planting goes, my primary cedar is the Jang cedar. That's worth about $600. But I did start with the Earthway and that worked for me for about two years. So you can, if you're on a really tight budget, start with an Earthway. It's about $100, the Jang is $600. But those are the, either one of those tools are going to be what you plant with. So you're gonna need some kind of 
bin to harvest produce into. I use Rubbermaid bins and uh, you know you might spend about $300 on getting a decent amount of these to start with. This is about a quarter of the bins that I use on my third of an acre farm. So if you're gonna start really cheap, these are the basic tools you, you, can, you can use. You can basically do all of your bed prep manually with tools like this. You don't need to have any machinery. You can do all of this by hand. Yes, it's more labor, but if you're gonna be on just 2,000 square feet to start, you can pretty much do everything with these tools. So this shovel here, you know, shoveling compost, what have you, this is a bed rake. This is for leveling out your beds. It's sort of a finishing rake. A good digging fork is to aerate your soil, to break ground, essentially. A stirrup hoe is a great weeding tool, but it's also a good bed, bed prep tool. When we're going between crops and we're doing shallow till or no till, we're shanking the crop out on the top, putting that residual stuff in the compost, and uh, using that to scuffle up the top of the bed. And then a standard rake like this, you can actually use to get a nice tilth in your soil. And uh, you don't need to have a rototiller or even a tilther. You can do it with a tool like this. And again, it is more labor, but if you're gonna start really cheap, these are the tools that I would suggest you start with. So that's the basic stuff. If you wanna start really cheap, you gotta start small and you need to keep things simple and they are going to be more labor intensive, but it's totally possible. So I'll do further videos on more of the production side of this, but this is the basic infrastructure that I would suggest if you're gonna start bare bones with basically very little money. You know, and you can also go even cheaper if you can find a lot of this stuff used. You can do garage sailing. You can find cheaper alternatives just to get the ball rolling because the important thing is just to get some production going. Start making some money. Once you start making money, then you can reinvest and grow it as you go.